all right everybody welcome back this is michael and this is going to be another tutorial in regards to uh, how i did my lighting uh for my one of my latest uh, pois uh, known as the rave cave uh people have asked how i've gotten these uh psychedelic lights to uh, to work in the system um it's very simple it's all vanilla there's no special mods um so i will walk you through on how to do this and a couple of cool little techniques you can use with it so let me go ahead and swap over to the prefab editor and i'll walk you through the steps see you on the other side all right so welcome back uh, we are now in the prefab editor i'll go through this uh, really quick it's it's very easy uh, it's just one of those little things where you we get a little couple of little settings and everything looks really cool. Um, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to make a very simple one. Uh, this, uh, basically a column um, that sits on the ground. I've done a, a deco, you know, a, a biome decoration uh, obelisk uh, that's based off of this. Uh, so basically, what you end up doing, at least on this one, is I'm going to create a hole uh, to put my first light in, um, and I'm just going to slap that down the bottom. Now, before we get into um, the uh, the build of this, let me just kind of go through some of the set, uh, settings. If you hold your E button down, um, you'll get your uh, your radial dial options here. Uh, what you want to do is select on the uh, the tools, uh, the screwdriver and the wrench to get the settings for the lighting. Uh, and these are basically the settings for the lighting. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, different lights have different defaults. Uh, some of them have shadows turned off. Some of them have them turned on. Uh, they might be a point light. They might be a spotlight. Uh, so each one is going to be different. I tend to use these little can lights, uh, these recess lights, because uh, they are small and they kind of disappear in the, the terrain. And I'll, I'll show you how that works. Um, your basic uh, deal with these is that you want the light to shine through whatever object you have sitting on it. Now, in the real world, that doesn't work. When the light hits a solid object, it bounces off and hits your eye and, and disperses. Um, unless it's a transparent type object like glass, uh, where it can pass through, but it might uh, refract or defract and, and bounce off into, into different directions. Um, but within 3D programs such as the Unity engine that uh, Seven Days to Die is using, uh, you can kind of tweak these and, and cheat on how light works. Um, like I said, normally, a, you know, you cast a light on a solid, solid object, it's going to cast a shadow uh, because it is blocking the light. It's, it's preventing it from continuing on past the object. Uh, but with this game, you can actually turn the shadowing off, and that makes things a lot more efficient. Uh, if you're not aware as a, as a prefab editor, um, the lighting within Unity is not all that efficient, uh, being that if you have a whole bunch of lights in your POI, and you have have their shadows turned on um, and they overlap, their coverage overlaps, um, you will get a, a significant amount of FPS drop um, in your game. Now that's not necessarily true if you have the shadows turned off. You're still gonna get a tiny bit of frame drop, but it's nowhere near the amount uh, that you'll see if you have the shadows turned on. Uh, that That's the reason why, you know, in the, the Rave Cave, I really wasn't too worried about the playability of it because none of those lights had the shadows turned on. They were all turned off, um, even though there was a lot of major lighting uh, overlap and intersection. Uh, the frame rate drop really wasn't all that significant. You still, like I said, you're still going to get some, but you generally get more of a frame drop from zombies just spawning in as opposed to you know a, a non-shadow light that's overlapping. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Always want to make sure uh, that your shadows are turned off if you're going to be using lighting. Uh, so as I said, these are the um, these are the settings for it. You can change your colors. You can change your intensity. You can change your range. And we're going to be playing with all this. I'm just going to leave this off for the time being and just build my structure around it. All right, so I'm going to model this based off of the uh, obelisk that I've created before. Uh, they're very basic. Um, so again, my light is going to start off Underground, this is going to be the surface of my ground, and we'll we'll play around with this and, and change the surface to other materials. Uh, but for the time being, uh, my my bottom light is going to be inside the ground, uh, so I need to remember that. And then I'm going to create a little platform 
uh, that my uh, terrain block is going to be sitting on. And that's um, that's what I tend to use on the um, as kind of the area that gets lit up by uh, the lights. You can use any block. Um, what really happens is that when the light is passing through, remember we have the shadows turned off, so it's actually passing through solid objects. Um, it's not going to technically, when it, when it escapes or when it emerges from a solid object, so I'll say I have a, a, a solid object over the top of that light, it's going to be coming straight up this way. Um, it's not going to be casting shadows or it's not going to be you know, blocked by this. So the light is going to pass all the way through this. Now what's interesting is that while it emerges, it doesn't necessarily illuminate the flat surfaces. Uh, what it does is it interacts with the bump maps. Um, so if you're if at all familiar with, uh, with 3D work, um, there are a lot of ways to trick the eye into thinking uh, you have more complex models than what you really have. Uh, because the more complicated a, an object is, the more memory it takes, and that's going to cause longer times for rendering and slower animations and whatnot. Uh, so there are various methods that have been used for, for literally decades uh, to make things look more complex than they are, and one of those is bump maps. Um, so that is basically a grayscale image that goes from white to black um, that will tell the computer rendering engine whether something is deep or something is high. So it's creating a bump with, with your valleys and your, your hilltops. Uh, so if you look at this concrete, you can kind of see you've got these cracks in here. Well, that is not only just the the image that you're looking at, uh, there is a second layer that you can't really see, which is a, uh, a bump map or a height map. Um, and basically where these cracks are, are going to be darker valleys and the rest of the area is gonna be you know, more flat gray. Uh, there'll be more variations. And, and most of the blocks that uh, are in Seven Days to Die has some sort of bump map on them. Uh, not all of them do. Uh, but that is what is what's really affecting the light when it emerges again, and you'll see that once we um, once we get this running. Um, so I'm just going to create this little platform here. Uh, just going to make it a three by three. That seems to be a nice little uh, little space. And I also do three by three because I also hide zombies inside these. Uh, remember, I I also use uh, the terrain blocks primarily for uh, my lit area. Um, and if you recall from one of my previous episodes, you can actually hide sleeper zombies inside terrain and have them uh, pop out um, as part of a uh, as part of a trigger. Um, so let's go ahead and and then, you know I've got the the light is blocked by this this uh, you know concrete block here, um, but since we we're going to have the, uh, the shadows turned off, it's not going to matter. So let's go ahead and create our, our terrain portion of it. So let me just grab, so there's basically, what is there, six, there's 10 terrain blocks that you really want to use or that you can use uh, that won't cause any issues. Um, that Those are your, your ore blocks, um, so your coal, your iron, your concrete, your lead, potassium nitrate, and your oil shale. Um, these all do have different bump maps on them. I find that the best bump map is on the potassium nitrate. Um, the other ones are not quite as great. The The oil shale actually looks really cool uh, depending on how you light it, what kind of lights you use. Um, but they all can be used. Uh, as far as the other terrain blocks that you can use, you can also use asphalt, you can use gravel, stone, and dirt. Now, you can use these other ones, but these can all be changed depending on what biome your POI spawns into. So even though you may say, I wanna use sandstone, 
um, if you spawn into the wasteland, um, it's going to change your sandstone to the wood debris or the destroyed stone uh, debris like everything it's changed in the wasteland. Um, so the only blocks that do not change regardless of what uh, biome you're in are going to be your asphalt, your gravel, your stone, your dirt, and your six ore types. So these are the ones that you can use. Now be aware that if you have a horizontal surface like a floor um, with asphalt, I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of what I've done uh, using asphalt as a lit floor. Um, it is baked into the game that these are roads and uh, when a biome spawns and it's got an asphalt road, it's going to put decals of rubble on it, you know, like the paper and the, and the trash and the, and the blood bore. Um, so this one, it looks cool, um, and you can use it for walls and ceilings without any issues, but if you use it for a floor, just be aware that you will get uh, some, uh, some decor decals on it, uh, and you'll see that when I, when I bring up that example. Uh, so I'm just going to start off. I'm going to, like I said, I like to use the uh, potassium nitrate. It's got a really nice uh, bump map on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. Uh, I'm going to select this area uh, to block that off, and then I'm going to raise it up. Uh, let's take it up like uh, eight or seven. Yeah, let's just go this high. That's that's about high as we want. Um, try to keep track of how high things are. You can always come back and count it later. Uh, but we're going to be tweaking our lights and knowing how tall things are uh, helps a lot. So let me get, go ahead and bring this back down again. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So remember, we're going to have a six block high block of potassium nitrate. So I hit my L button to fill that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, shrink this and put a cap on the top out of concrete like so so let me get my concrete box selected and hit my L button and now we have that little cap now things are kind of floaty up there um, we just need to play with the the density of these concrete blocks so I'm going to do my shift Z to select one corner go over to the other side and hit shift C and now I'm going to hit my control up arrow key which will increase the density of that those concrete blocks and suck the uh, terrain blocks down. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the top up here. We'll set that on, uh, we'll highlight the uh, concrete on there, hit your control up arrow key and suck that up there. So one thing you're gonna notice uh, using terrain blocks um, like this is that your corners are always gonna end up getting cut off. Um, so what I've started doing is instead of using the full blocks as my, my base, I start using this, uh, what the technical term for this one is, is the cube corner beveled. Um, again, whatever material you like. Uh, so let me go ahead and go into advanced rotation on this so we can replace these. And I'm gonna use my shift uh, left or right button click to replace. And you notice that uh, lost its density when I did that, but we'll go back and reset that. And I'm just gonna try to get these in the Upper corners as they pop up. Where to get that one? That one over here. So, and we're looking for our last corner over there. There we go. So, like so. Let me go ahead and reselect these again. Like so. And my control up arrow key. And now it matches up real nice. So, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this by using my control C and then use my G key to move my selection, and I will just paste that down back where that is. So now we have a nice, cool looking obelisk, monolith, however you wanna call it, um, and we're ready to uh, start lighting up. Now we also are going to put a light at the very top here, uh, because what's gonna happen is, as I mentioned, uh, when the light emerges from the side, if you picture the light coming from down here and coming out this way, it's gonna be, interacting with the bump mat coming out. Now, if you look at it from the side, it's perfectly flat, um, but as you'll notice, it looks kind of bumpy and the computer will think it's bumpy. Uh, so when the light emerges from this direction, it's going to be hitting, if, say if there's a, a bump that looks like this, it's gonna be hitting this lower side of that bump and lighting up this side. It's not gonna light up this side. It's going to light up this 
bottom side where it's interacting from. So if we put a light from the top and it's coming out and emerges, it's going to be lighting the other side of that bump hill. Um, so that's where you get those kind of groovy uh, LSD lighting crystal effects is uh, the lights interacting with different sides of the bump map, uh, illuminating them in different colors. Uh, so again, we're going to go ahead and put a light up here. So let me go ahead and clear out this space. And we're going to take this light and face it downwards. Right now it's facing upwards. So let me get my advanced rotation doer like that and just plop it in. Um, now you can go ahead and wrap the terrain around this to make it more flush. It just makes it look a lot neater. So I'm going to hit my shift Z button to select that light. And then I'm going to hit my control up arrow key and bring it up. It's still going to be visible because it's, it's flat on the surface, but it's, uh, it makes it a little bit cleaner. And then later on, you can put a, a sheet over the top of that to, uh, to, you know, cover that up. So let's go ahead and turn on our top light here so we can kind of get things adjusted. So right now it's on, let me go ahead and I'm going to, uh, set my time so it's dark in here. So we do have a little bit of light. I haven't changed any of the default settings on here. So let me go ahead and show you what those are. Uh, right now we do have the shadows on. So there's two shadow settings. There's soft and there's hard and then there's none. Um, we have two uh, type, uh, type lights. Uh, we have point and we have spot. Uh, we have different states. These are fluctuating, blinking, and pulsing, as well as static. And then we have a range. I don't want the max range. Remember what the max range is, but our intensity max is eight. And then we have a uh, a uh, a color wheel here where we can change the color of the light. Um, so right now we are set with soft shadows. Um, you may see a little bit of light popping out. Um, that. That's the extent that you're going to get on, on this with the, the shadows turned on. It really shouldn't have any at all, uh, but sometimes uh, some of it goes ahead and escapes. So let's go ahead and change our settings. Um, very simple. I always turn the shadows off. So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. It looks a little bit brighter, um, but not a whole heck of a lot. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, change my intensity. And we'll go back out there. Now it's definitely looking brighter. You do see it, it is merging now. Um, let's also change the color of it to make it a nice bright orange. We'll hit OK. And now you can really start seeing um, what was occurring in the rave cave. We start seeing it get this light coming out. It's emerging. And if you kind of imagine this as a protrusion, when the light emerges, it is hitting this side of that bump. Um, and illuminating it, and it's not illuminating the bottom side of that bump. Now, if we go into the, our other light, and we're, since we're in God mode, we can kind of glitch through the uh, train blocks. We're going to go ahead and turn him on, and we'll change the color to something else so we can see the difference. We're going to turn our shadows off, um, hit OK, and we'll slip back out again here. Now, I don't have my intensity on. So let's go, oh, I didn't even turn on the light. Let's uh, turn on the light. There we go. So now we can see the light is hitting different spots of the surface here. Again, these are kind of the undersides of the bumps, whereas the orange is lighting the top sides of those bumps. Uh, so let's play around with this a little bit more. Now you see it's also, it's also affecting those bump maps that are in the ground. Because this is a point light, which means it's spreading in all directions like the sun does. Uh, so we do want to kind of focus that so we don't necessarily have that effect everywhere. You might want that effect. Uh, but in this case, we want it to just have the lighting effect for our little pillar here. So let's go into my settings again. And we're going to change this from a point to a spot. And sometimes it'll default to zero. Sometimes it'll, it depends on, it'll de default on what you had it on the last time you were in this. Um, so don't expect this to be in any place in particular. Now, if you watch me change this, you'll see, let me, um, let me kind of back up so you can see the top side of it and I can still adjust it at the same time. 
if you'll see it's moving up and down the column that's basically saying if this light was on a wall or floor it's only going to be pointing light in one direction it's not going to be sending light behind it it's just only going to be sending it so you can have a 180 degree uh, spread that you can do um, and as I move it lower and lower it decreases the amount that's getting hit uh, by that light. So I'm going to put it, I like to put it around 120, 125, because uh, that you generally will put you at an angle um, where it may not, inter not, ne not necessarily interfere with other objects that are next to it, uh, but it'll still illuminate all of your rock. Um, let's also look at our range. Uh, remember, we had six blocks of terrain in here we also have one block here and one block here before we hit the floor so we have a total of eight blocks between this light and the ground and i tend to try not to light the ground unless that's an effect you're looking for uh, i just want to have these uh blocks actually or the uh the terrain blocks illuminated so let's go ahead and adjust this so right now we're on six if i go to Eight, you can see that we've got that fairly well illuminated. If I go a half block more, it's gonna start illuminating the ground. Uh, again, I, I prefer to not illuminate the ground. Again, but that might be an effect you are looking for. Uh, so it's, it's up to you on how you wanna do that. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it at eight. Now I'm also going to copy this because now I've got everything fairly well set. Um, I can apply this to other lights as well. Uh, so let me go ahead and copy this, and you'll see the paste button shows up, uh, and I'm going to hit OK and dive down underneath here and change my settings on this one. Now this one is a little bit too dark of a blue, uh, so let me lighten that up here. We'll maybe get a more of a cyan. Um, up. Let me go ahead and paste my values. You notice these are, again, kind of the default values you get with these particular lights. We're going to hit paste, and now it carried over. Now our shadows are turned off. We have this um the spread here for the bottom one i tend to go with 120 uh for the angle uh that just seems to keep the floor from being illuminated as well um and we're going to make this a light cyan now we are actually one block more uh from the top than our top light was because we are now underground uh, so i'm going to increase my range by one block there so it'll go to the top of the, the pillar, but not beyond that. I'm gonna hit OK here, and we'll come out, and there we have a very psychedelic looking uh, column. Again, different uh, terrain blocks give you different uh, textures. Uh, you just play around with an experiment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop into a kind of a practice POI that I was messing around with, uh, just to show you what you can do and the different types of results you can get. And you can see the uh, these concrete blocks are illuminated really cool. It's really cool. I really like the effect, um, but you definitely get a, a very interesting effect when you're using some of these terrain blocks. So I'm going to switch over to my other POI and just kind of walk you through uh, some examples that I've been playing around with. I will see you in a second. Alrighty, here we are back in my uh, playtest editor and I've uh, opened up a, uh, it's just a test world that I do to uh, to try things out. I, I spend a lot of time experimenting with blocks and lining and techniques and whatnot. Um, so I like to, to do a lot of playing around. Uh, and I, I would highly recommend you do this because you, uh, you can find out a lot of interesting things with the game uh, as, you, as you play around with it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, my lighting down uh, just simply because that's kind of what this effect is built for. Um, I do have some zombies that are hidden in some of these, and I'll go ahead and uh, and activate some of them. I don't want to do it for the entire uh, setup, but um, just to kind of show you, uh, I've got zombies hidden in these uh, in these train blocks. And again, these are just different uh, different designs that I've been playing around with. These we have the a curved uh, corners. Uh, saw blocks with the uh, arch corners in here with terrain on the inside. I have a looks like an orange light on the upper level and a blue light coming from below. Uh, creates a nice little effect here. Here we have the I don't know what to call it, bubble a uh, bubble uh, column. Uh, again, this is uh, it's, it's a three by three, but with these uh, balls on the uh, on these. 
I don't know remember what you call the uh, the block where you have we can match up uh, hemispheres on each side uh, that's what this uh, this block is here on the corner um, and then again we've got some zombies let me go ahead and walk up next to this uh, they will come popping out and attack you and since it's a uh, night time they'll be a little bit faster than normal uh, like so this one also has zombies they tend to have problems uh, getting out of some of these um, they do have to squat down because of the uh, the shape of the, uh, the cover um, and I don't know why only one came out this time around. Let me just see if I can pop my head in here, see if they're still in here. Yeah, they just didn't, didn't want to wake up. Uh, no worries. Uh, I've got a bunch of zombies in here, so it's probably just overloading the system. Uh, this is a very plain Jane one. This is using asphalt. Um, very simple. Again, we've got four zombies hidden on the inside. And once I dispatch these fellows, I can fly in here and kind of show you what's going on here. Um, we have our bottom guy that's able to stand on here. Uh, if you recall from my uh, hidden zombie uh, tutorial, uh, you can spawn zombies inside terrain blocks, uh, but they do have to have something solid to be able to spawn in on. Uh, so that's why I have these little discs. Um, this is actually turned upside down uh, with the bottom portion overlapping where the zombie is actually sitting. Let me go ahead and pause. The zombies using the asterisk key and we'll go over to this one that still has some sleepers in it so this uh disc block is actually filling this whole that you know lower level uh where this zombie's upper torso is uh but that doesn't matter because the only part that really spawns in is the lower part of the zombie um but it still leaves headroom because it's upside down uh for the zombie and it won't glitch out so this is how you can stack zombies on top of each other. Uh, again, they do have to have something solid, but because this is inside terrain, um, these are being held in place by the terrain itself. It's kind of confusing, but it works. So <laughs> just take my word for it. Um, so again, that's how, that's how I'm hiding the, uh, the zombies in there. And it's, now that I've got them turned off, I'm just going to do a kind of a grand tour of Again, this is what I do. I, I play around with different uh, blocks, different textures, have different bump maps. Um, and you see the, uh, the tread plates uh, have really distinct bump maps, uh, so they create a much stronger effect than others. Uh, this is just your scrap iron paint. It also has very strong bump maps, um, so it will uh, have a much stronger effect. Here's a, uh, one of the trim blocks. It's like a damaged trim block uh, that have a, a different pattern on the corners. And I just set that up. This does not have zombies in the inside. Uh, this is a two by two column. Uh, so I'm using the two by two uh, spot light or uh, recessed light as opposed to the, the one by one. That way it keeps it centered um, and keeps things looking nice. And again, this is just plain cement, but it has very distinct and very deep bump maps um, so it uh, it uh, affects that quite well this is just a single column I have a a uh, a light here that's embedded inside the um, the terrain block and another one down below uh, just a, kind of a, a simple square pillar uh, again these are just different blocks block shapes uh, and block textures uh, that allows you to get uh, different techniques. Here I've used uh, various uh, step or stair blocks um, with that lighting effect underneath. Again, this is a two by two, or is this a three by three? This looks like a two by two. Um, yeah, two by two. Uh, so we have the two by two light underneath here, uh, meaning this uh, actually will take up uh, four blocks worth, but it keeps it centered. Uh, so it allows you to uh, keep symmetrical with uh, things you're working with. Um, this one's kind of a cool effect, a very kind of alien science fiction-y kind of uh, look to it. Uh, we have inverted columns here um, with different lighting in the lower and upper areas with that alternating. Uh, and these ones I have a spotlight, a single spotlight in the bottom, and I have it using as a as a spotlight with the angle and the distance so it doesn't go beyond these corners so it doesn't illuminate the 
uh, the blocks to its side just to keep it very isolated. Uh, I think that's a very groovy effect. Again, just playing around with blocks, you get a, a playing around with a bunch of steps. Um, here we have a bunch of wide columns, but again, there's only one light in the bottom and one light at the very top. Uh, again, they are illuminating um, you know, any surface that it, that it hits when it's coming through to include the bump maps uh, along the sides. Uh, very kind of uh, funky look to it. Um, over here, let's go back over to this side. Here I'm playing around with the, uh, the uh, control panel um, blocks uh, in combination with terrain, in combination with the lighting. And we do have some zombies uh, tucked away in here as well. Uh, but this gives you a very sci-fi-y kind of look to it. Um, these panels do kind of have some self-illumination, uh, but when you combine it with the illumination coming from the top and bottom, uh, you get some additional effects that looks uh, pretty groovy as well. Uh, let's go this way. Very similar, uh, kind of same setup. Um, in here, we actually have some vultures in here. Now, vultures will... When they spawn, then they will automatically fly upwards. Um, so depending on what you want to do, you may want to block this off. I put some glass on the top, but they can still black, uh, break through. Um, they can also fly out from the sides. Um, but if you want them to fly downward, you pretty much have to block everything else off uh, to force them to go that one particular direction. But again, this looks uh, pretty groovy. Um, I might I might redo some of the columns and and, and pillars in the rave cave uh, to utilize this look because I think it has much more of a, a sci-fi type look to it. Um, over here we have a larger one. Um, this one actually has up to I think nineteen uh, zombies uh, that can hide away inside it. I could actually probably put a full twenty in there. Oops, I knocked one of the guys off. Um, but you can you can you can stuff a lot of zombies inside these uh, these columns here. Uh, so we already looked at those over here. Uh, again, this is using different trim blocks uh, with different paint textures and different rock materials uh, for the insides. Now I did a lot of playing around with uh, randomly rotated blocks. I, I've created a mod. Um, that allows me to uh, let me just go ahead and pull it up here um, I've modified a particular block If I can spell it right so this particular block here I've It's just a little modlet that that basically adds full rotation and random rotation um, When you place this down so let me go ahead and if I start putting these down you see it's randomly rotated um, so I've used this to create a three by three column of of these um, and then I use my wrench uh, replacement tool uh, to swap these out with a particular block. Um, now when I'm doing this I want to make sure that I don't have any of these that are at 45 degrees. A lot of these building blocks that are like this if they are at 45 degrees um, they, they generally do not have the full advanced rotation turned on. Um, if they are at the 45 degrees, some of these surfaces will become transparent. They they, they kind of glitch out. So you always want to make sure if you're going to do something like this, and I'll be distributing this uh, this modlet out on Nexus in in the near future for for prefabbers to be able to utilize. Um, if you do want to do something like this, where you are going to be uh, replacing uh, this block with uh, some building blocks you always want to make sure that they are at a 90 degree angle all right i also mentioned that you can use this technique to to light up floors walls and ceiling and this is just a real quick uh example that i put together i went ahead and brought it into a world um, but you can see you can do some really groovy uh and psychedelic effects um this is uh simply a layer of uh of nitrate in the floor uh, and the walls and the ceiling uh, with lighting. Let me go ahead and uh, slip inside here into the walls here so you can see I've got them lit from the sides uh, to illuminate those uh, those terrain blocks uh, with different colors. Uh, so it comes up with a really, really psychedelic, I can imagine a, 
a maze or something like that uh, with this setup. Now you can see it's a it's pretty jerky here because I have so many lights. Let me turn on my uh, hit my F8 to turn on my FPS. Uh, normally I get uh, 60 FPS uh, without a lot of lighting and whatnot, uh, but it does because there are so many lights in here. Uh, you are going to have a bit of a, a penalty um, when you're going through this. Uh, here is the um, the asphalt I mentioned earlier, and you can see we've got these uh, decals. Now, in some cases, they will disappear as you walk closer to them, uh, but not always. It all depends on uh, on the, the area that you're in. Uh, but again, it creates a, a very interesting uh, effect. Uh, this is something that I would probably not overdo too much in a POI. Um, but it can add a uh, really nice visual impact um, uh, to your to your prefabs. Uh, here I've got them in water, um, so we got the same sort of thing where we've got uh, some asphalt in the ground, and we have uh, some lights uh, illuminating it from the inside, uh, both on this one and a, a larger one here. Now there will be some bleed over on some of the lights, so you'll see the. Uh, you know, the other vegetation uh, takes on a, an eerie glow uh, that might be an effect that you're actually looking for. Uh, but just keep in mind that is something that uh, that can happen when you have a, a, a lot of lights going on here. Again, this one is a, is a lot of lights, especially all in this very small area. Uh, so there is going to be an FPS hit. You can see I'm losing you know, around 15 to, to 20 uh, frames per second uh, when I'm in this area. Um, but if it's, a, if it's a small enough area, uh, it'd be definitely worthwhile to uh, to add it into your to your POIs. So as you can see, I've got a uh, a fairly large gallery here of of uh, various examples of what I've been doing with this uh, random rotation and different lighting techniques as well as different textures. Um, but I'm not going to uh, show that to you. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Battle Poppy, was going to do a uh, a little walkthrough and uh, kind of show off uh, some of these other ones. So please uh, give him some love and check out his channel. I'll provide a link to his video down below once he gets it up. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for joining me. If you like what you see, uh, if you're enjoying these tutorials, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, uh, please uh, subscribe. And I'll be putting these different types of tutorials up on a uh, fairly regular basis. So I'd like to thank you all for joining me and hope to see you again soon. Take care.